It's been four days now since I put up the post and exposed probably the biggest lie Gary Tomlinson has ever said uh, about him having official quarantine facilities for his race, but turning out that he doesn't. Actually, it's been radio silence. There's been nothing. Normally, I would get a reaction of trying to deflect about my past some of which is lies, some of which is very true. One of the great things about me is I'm a completely open book. I even wrote a book about my life, so everything's out there and there's nothing to unhide. But we've had nothing. All we've had is videos showing Pigeon's Boom release from the trailer and him talking about his new winter race and Venture Pigeons for sale at £250. 12 of which of those Venture Pigeons are actually Belgium rung pigeons that it looks like were imported illegally into the UK without the use of official quarantine. The winter race, incidentally, if it fills up, is exactly the amount of money that he's roughly down on the summer race entries at the moment. So... I posted the letter from APHA confirming he doesn't have quarantine facilities. You can see that on AskTomo.com. And no one has seen these facilities. And in fact, that's what piqued my interest. Nobody's seen it. Tomlinson is the type of person that will shout from the rooftops if he's got something new to show. And upon delving a little bit more into what it takes to get a quarantine facility approved, licensed and legal... You're talking tens and tens of thousands of pounds of the cost. They cannot be made out of wood. There are a bunch of requirements needed. And one of the big requirements is that you cannot have any other livestock or animals within a 200 meter radius of the quarantine facility, which practically makes it near on impossible for Tomlinson to ever have a quarantine facility because his son's got pigeons, he's got dogs and he's got chickens. And there's nowhere within the radius of that property that you could get that exclusion of 200 metres. So no one's seen these facilities and he hasn't said anything about it. And in his normal style, that's when he's been caught out. Because like I said previously, if any, there's any spin he can do on something, he'll come straight out talking about my past, calling me a... A, a pornographer calling me a child porn peddler calling me a paedophile and his mates jump on the bandwagon none of which is true i used to be in pornography many years ago completely legal and licensed but all the other stuff they've come up with is completely false in a way to discredit me we move on interestingly his supporters have been very quiet gary tomlinson in the past has um accused me of being jealous nothing could be further from the truth i couldn't be any less jealous or envious of that man and his family and what he does and how he runs his life i have said before i am very jealous up until now in the past of how hardcore his supporters are he could do pretty much and say anything to his hardcore supporters and they wouldn't go against him but interestingly those supporters have been quite quiet on this particular one. This link was posted the, about the quarantine. It was posted onto two websites. And I know for a fact that he complained to those websites and got one of them successfully removed. I'm not quite sure what happened to the other one. And of course, that's what he does when he wants to hide something. But what I do know is um, on Sunday alone, over 500 people went to that page showing that he's lying about the quarantine facilities on astomo.com. So I know he knows that it's there. He was CC'd into the email on the Thursday from APHA. So he knows that I asked the question. And he's doing his best to complain and and not make it public but 500 people have already seen it and it continues that site gets normally that site gets hundreds of people a month going to it just last week he lied in court he said to the judge that um i he managed to successfully get an injunction to bring down that site 
that was incorrect as well. He actually got an injunction to stop me removing, uh, to stop me publishing the confidential document about his settlement with the Sullivans. He never got an injunction to stop the site. It's what's called facts, opinion, and um, the site has always been up. And remember, Gary Tomlinson has lied many times before. He lied again in front of the judge saying that he paid me because he gave me 30 pigeons. No, he didn't. It was entries in the race. But that's a long time ago. He's lied specifically about, I think the two biggest lies he's told up until this, including this, is that he, 90 minutes after receiving 8,500 from the Sullivan brothers, he said, well, I've got no problem with the Sullivan brothers, everything's fine, I don't want people are talking about. But he'd just got 8,500 grand before. And he'd lied because he thought nobody could expose the truth as to what he'd actually done for them. What he'd done is took them to court for copyright infringement, took 8,500 grand off them because the Sullivans have a very successful business, they didn't want the hassle, a successful business outside of Pigeons. And he thought he could get away with lying, but little did he know that unfortunately I'd been sent a copy of that confidential order and I'd not agreed to anything. So he cl clear out lied and he's never said anything about it since and that's what he does because if he's been caught out he doesn't say anything. What he doesn't realise is that I was actually getting ready to leave all of this. In a screwed up world, the man never paid me a penny and then I end up owing £5,200 in legal costs. And despite that, because life's too short to deal with people like this, I was getting ready to leave it. I am agreed to pay £100 a month, begrudgingly, but at the end of the day you don't want bailiffs on your door threatening to take your property. Which is a pretty screwed up thing for me to get my head around. He, hang on a minute, he owed me money. I've not got any money and now I owe him money for legal costs. But anyway, but I was still getting ready to leave it. But then what he does, he comes out with another cocky bunch of lies. And he clearly says that he won the court case and it clearly shows who's telling the truth. And when I saw that, I thought, you're not getting away with that. I cannot accept that. Because the reality is he won nothing. He dropped both of his cases. All it was was a costs order because his dodgiest solicitor was charging £500 an hour apparently and I was only able to charge £19. And there's a massive disparity in that. Hence the reason I owed costs, which unfortunately the judge awarded him. So when he lied again about that, he couldn't just leave it. He didn't have the grace to leave it. He didn't have the class to just leave it. He comes out with more lies, trying to make it look like he was always in the right and what have you. I decided, you know what, I'm going to put more cases back into the court just to prove a point. And unfortunately, one of those cases was, is not able to go ahead. The money he owes me for the contract and all of that because I dropped the case. Why did I drop the case? Because his solicitor was making it very difficult to put it into small claims court. It was going to cost me thousands more compared to the 200 quid to put the case in that I put in. So I've got two out of three cases. I digress. Basically, I think publicly nobody's prepared to talk about this why is that it may be fear he does instill fear into people some people in fact there's only two people i know of one of which is morris o'donnell that shared that post and somebody else interestingly both of the people that have shared the post um have both been threatened by tomlinson either directly or indirectly as uh, before morris is a good friend of mine and shared it and from the day one has not liked how Tomlinson's acted and despite threats and all kinds of different things Morris doesn't care similar to me don't care um, because remember a bully will always play the victim when he's stood up to and that's exactly what he's been doing in, in, in the court this week last week he tried to make it sound like um, I was the responsible for his wife's health, his hill health, and all kinds of things. Again, they'll play the victim very quickly, as soon as they're stood up to. So publicly, not a lot of people are talking about this. But privately, I know people are talking. I know it's going around. I've had people message me about it. Why are people not talking publicly? Well, of course, 
if you're an entrant in his race and not happy with the lies he's said, you're not about to go and tell him because you would worry about your status within the race. If you're not involved in the race, you'd be loath to talk about it publicly because of fear of retribution from him or his family. I get that. But there's a bigger thing going on. That email clearly states he hasn't got quarantine facilities. So that's a fact. And the reality of that fact, of that lie, is that he's lied to competitors in the race. He's lied to the public at large. Will anybody dare to ask for their money back in the race? I doubt it. But he's also done bigger lies. This is a much bigger lie. He's lied to other one loft races. He put other one loft races, which bear in mind and remember that he publicly threatened to grass up when he announced he'd got his quarantine facility. He publicly threatened all other one loft races. And then a few days later, based on what I'd imagine the feedback of what he got, changed his mind and said, you know what, you can use my quarantine facility for other one loft races, can use it free of charge. But of course, there was no quarantine facility. This is a bigger, probably the biggest lie he's ever said that I know of. As I said, he's lied to a lot of people. He's lied to other one-off races. Do the RPRA have anything to say about this? Based on my experience with the RPRA in the past, dealing with this idiot and his mates, I wouldn't imagine they want to get involved. So, will Tomlinson actually admit that he's lied once and for all? I doubt it. Will he ever mention it? It remains to be seen. But what is 100% that he did not have, does not have permission to bring in pigeons via an official quarantine station and over 300 pigeons this year were imported illegally as per APH and DEFRA rules. Every single one of those pigeons is illegally imported, mixing with lots of other pigeons. And then in September, he's planning to take whatever pigeons remain from his race and put them back into France to race back. That's a fact. The biggest lie he's ever told, and he's told some pretty big lies in the past, and I get why people don't want to publicly talk about it, but I don't get how he can get away with that lie. It remains to be seen. Will he actually address it, or, or will he... <coughs> Just keep <coughs> talking about his race. Let's see. But what I do know is <coughs> that post that was made on Friday is fact. As with every of the other post that is on Ask Tomo, in front of the judge again on Wednesday, he even said that it's full of lies and mistruths. Every single post on that site, astomo.com, is either a fact, backed up by facts, or my opinion or my supposition. And unfortunately for Tomo, freedom of speech and expression and the publishing of facts is not yet banned in the UK. So it remains to be seen what happens. Thank you for watching. I'll give any more updates that are important along the way on astomo.com. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. It's an interesting read into a man and his family that purport to be the most open, honest and transparent people in the sport, but really are all about the money and only like telling people what they need to know.